Hello everyone, uh, Apology 2402 course, and I guess the YouTube world now, uh, here to continue lecturing on the immune system. So, uh, up to this point, uh, you should already be familiar with the two main divisions of the immune system, the innate system, and also now the uh, adaptive system. So we've looked at uh, the innate aspect of things like complement, uh, the NK cells. We look at the adaptive, our B cells, our T cells. What this discussion is going to focus on now is the humoral immunity, right? So looking at the antibodies, those, those B cells, plasma cells, antibodies. So uh, let's get into our discussion today. The antibodies. Right, also known as immunoglobulins. So immunoglobulins, immunoglobulins are it's a fancy way of saying an antibody, right? So they are the gamma glo uh, globulin portion of the blood. So we talk early on with the blood chapter, we have all these proteins in plasma. Well, these are some of those proteins in the plasma, right? So proteins secreted by plasma cells, we got to keep a distinction between the aqueous component of blood, the, the, pl the plasma itself, and the actual plasma cells, right? These are the uh, derived from the actual activated B cells, right? So uh, two words that mean slightly different things. Well, you know, a lot of different things here, right? But the plasma of blood, that 55% hematocrit, and then the uh, plasma of the uh, basically the, the, the plasma cells that are secreting the little factories for antibodies. Right? And uh, this picture kind of shows the, uh, like a generic kind of a Y shape. If you can envision like a, almost like a triangular Y shape, that's going to be the generic distinction for an antibody. So we're going to see that shape here some more in a bit. So basic antibody structure. So these are Y shaped. Uh, we consider them monomers, and they're Y-shaped, but they're actually four parts linked together. So we're going to have two identical heavy chains. Heavy because molecularly they weigh more, so they have a more mass. They're heavier. They're going to be shown in green here. So we have our green, uh, our, our green and green uh, heavy chains, and then in orange there you have your light chains because they're molecularly smaller, so they weigh less. They're lighter. And we have a variable region of each arm combines to two identical antigen binding sites. And that I'll explain that here. So a lot of information on one picture here. So we have the heavy region, kind of in the bluish color. Heavy region is heavy chain, heavy chain, but the heavy chain itself is going to be very constant throughout the sort of the, the, the bottom part of the Y. And then as we branch out towards the tip, we have the variable area, variable area. We have the light region, the constant and constant, and then the variable sort of that darker purple, darker purple. So what that translates to in English, uh, most of the antibodies will be very similar here, right? This is very consistent, very non-unique. The unique parts of the uh, the antibodies will be up here towards the tip. And this is important because that's where we have the antigen binding site. Uh, if we think back to our discussion, we have the ability to generate uh, a billion different types of combinations, right, of, of these um, sort of antibodies that can identify a billion type of antigens. So where is all this variation happening? That variation is happening at this variable region and at this variable region there, right? So uh, all of these are being held together by covalent bonds. We have covalent bonds, these disulfide bridges. Um, so the chemical structure forming this sort of generic Y-shaped pattern with a constant um, and then a variable uh, component. So that's the, the molecular structure of these antibodies. There are proteins, right? So they're, they're, they're actual protein uh, molecules. 
We're going to define them into a couple of classes, antibody or immunoglobulin classes. Uh, they are determined by the constant region of the stem. So that constant region of the stem. We're going to have uh, IgM, IgA, IgD, IgG, and IgE. So it spells the word MAG. I, mean, I guess I don't know a MAG, but I know it's a name. Some uh, think of some elderly lady named MAG. But so MAG, IgM, immunoglobulin M, immunoglobulin A, immunoglobulin D, immunoglobulin G, and immunoglobulin E. So IgM, A, D, G, and E. Um, as we get into more discussion, we're going to see uh, another term. The idea of a monomer, mono meaning one. So it's basically one antibody. A dimer, dimer meaning two. So now we're going to have two of those Y shaped monomers bonded together at their uh, constant regions there. And then we have also the pentamer form or pentamer form. So this is going to be, if you think of a pentagon, this is a five-sided uh, geometric figure. So we have the penta uh, pentamer form, which would be then the five connected monomers together, all connected again at their heavy region, uh, constant region. Now, um, form fits function. Well, we know that there's going to be different anatomies which translate to different physiologies. So let's kind of get an idea of when or why uh, these antibodies will, will be important. So let me, I'm going to actually start not in the right sequence here. I'm going to hop over here to IgG. IgG is the monomeric form. It's, it's just one monomer. And it's the most abundant, right? 75 to 85 percent of the antibodies in circulation in blood plasma, right? So, um, IgG is one of the the most prevalent. Anytime, anytime you think of IgGs, it's typically IgG that's uh, going to be around there, right? So that's the the first one. This is one of the first antibodies that we receive. We talk about different types of passive immunity. Uh, this is one of these sort of natural uh, passive types of immunities that we inherit from, from mom, right? So IgG is able to cross the placental barrier. So it's able to be conveyed from parent to offspring. And we'll come back to some other stuff here. But so IgG, now let's come back to IgM. So IgM is important because it is the first antibody that's released. So this class of antibody, IgM, is the first one that will, that will be secreted out. Uh, if you think of it, well, why would it be first? Well, if you're first to the scene, you want the really good um, warrior, really good soldier, per se, right? And, and I always think of, like, um, uh, Marines, right? If there's a war, who's right there at the front line? The Marines. So IG Marines, IGM, right? IG, uh, this uh, uh, pentamer form. So it has all of these little arms to attach and to connect to antigens. So it makes it a very good first uh, warrior, right? So there's, I can imagine this inflamed, infected area, all of this bacteria there, and then this large, very bulky, you know, 10 little gripping uh, hand, little uh, variable regions there that are able to, to capture and catch and, and hold and start to, uh, you know, agglutinate. They start to clump. They start to hold the, the bacteria there. Right? So IgM readily fixes and activates complement. So IgM then recruits the complement that's part of our innate immune system as well. So that one we talked about early on, uh, the innate immune system complement, remember the, the, the complement cascade, uh, C3B going all the way through uh, C9, the membrane attack complex. Um, so uh, uh, all of that is linked back to IgM. Uh, IgA is a separate class. 
it can exist in the monomeric form or the dimeric form, right? Uh, IgA sometimes is known as secretory IgA because we find it in body secretions. Our body secretes it, right? In mucus, uh, other types of body secretions will, will sort of leak out IgG. So it's going to be on the uh, mucous membranes that are very, very uh, kind of first line defenses, part again of the uh, innate system. So uh, innate system and the adaptive system again are very highly integrated here in, in both examples. So the adaptive, the humoral response, linking back to the innate system and part of our innate mucous membranes uh, also being integrated with the secretory IgA here. Uh, IgD, uh, this is going to be a surface receptor, right? Um, we'll talk a little bit about this in a bit. So IgD is going to be very, very highly correlated with the B cells, right? Our B cells, uh, which we know are going to be uh, developing in the bone marrow, they're going to be the ones that are stimulated to produce plasma cells to produce antibodies, right? And, and we'll talk about these receptors in a bit. There's our IgG. So the most abundant, but not the first at the scene, right? It's the first that we inherit, uh, but normally we see IgG uh, in the secondary response or the late primary response. So we talk about uh, becoming immunocompetent. Uh, well, the first ones at the scene, the Marines, the IgMs do their job, and then a little bit late in that primary response, and then on the secondary responses from here on out, we start to see the IgG. Now, at this point in your life, at this age, you know, I suspect, again, we've already been exposed to many, many things. So not a lot of new antigens, uh, per se, come into contact with, with your system. So the, the majority of the Ig class that, you, that are in circulation right now would be IgG. Oh, and then we go to IgE. Um, for those of you, for those of us that struggle with allergies, um, allergies are going to be sort of uh, a problematic aspect that IgE is also associated with. So IgE is a monomeric form, and it's active in some allergies and in parasitic infections. So this is uh, going to link them back again to our eosinophils. Eosinophils were our parasitic worm specialists. IgEs are also going to be sort of involved with the, the removal of these uh, parasitic worms if they do enter into our body. So IgE causes mast cells and basophils to release histamine. So the basophils, those little tiny uh, components that release histamine cause all the inflammation cascade. So IgE communicates with those. IgE also is going to be sort of associated with the helping of the eosinophils to get rid of parasites. Uh, mast cells again releasing these uh, these cellular signals that will enhance that will trigger and enhance inflammation. So. Uh, uh, IgE can be good in some aspects, can enhance allergies and, and some of these other aspects in, in the other hand as well. So same idea, I'll let you kind of read through all of that. But again, our first at the scene, the IgM, pentameric form, the IgA, secretory IgA, dimeric form, body secretions. Um, IgD, the receptor, IgG, the most abundant of the immunoglobulins, and then IgE, right? So, um, again, severe allergic, allergic attacks, chronic parasitic infections, so those are what we associate IgE with. Okay, so um, important, important uh, aspect here. So we know that antibodies are an important weapon of the adaptive immune system. But actually, what do they do? How do they keep us safe and, and healthy? So uh, we deal with this sort of acronym, P-L-A-N, PLAN. 
These are some of the roles that, uh, uh, that, that antibodies can be part of, right? So P, precipitation. L, lysis, indirectly, with the help of complement. A, agglutination, and N, neutralization. So these are, again, the, the roles that antibodies play in immunity. Uh, so again, humoral immunity, we have an antigen. Antigen uh, then responds with antibodies. So what can happen? Right? Here we see our IgM, which is gonna be involved in the agglutination process. So with all these arms, it can hold and clump many things. Uh, this is uh, an example of an improper blood transfusion, improper cross match where we inherit the wrong, or not inherit, we, we receive the wrong uh, blood in the transfusion. So why is that bad? Because now all these IgMs are gonna clump all of these blood cells, making this big aggregation, this, this big mass, and they can then start to precipitate out of solution, right? That's, that's one aspect that, that can happen as well. So the glutination is the clumping, Precipitation, these large clumps, uh, these other situations where the heavy clumped aspect now comes out of solution, precipitates out. Uh, neutralization, antibodies can actually neutralize dangerous antigenic determinants. Uh, the best example I can give you here, let's say a phlebotomist is working with a, a needle, right? So uh, in order to prevent that, a person from walking around and stabbing people with the needle, they cover the needle with the little cap. Right? So by covering the needle, the, by covering the needle with the cap, you neutralize the the threat, the danger of that needle itself. So the antibodies sort of go and they position their variable variable region on the antigen itself, and that antigen doesn't have access now to the to the rest of the body. So that's the neutralization, right? Uh, in this situation, precipitation and agglutination will enhance phagocytosis, and they will also enhance inflammation. So again, recruiting the innate system here. Once the innate system is involved, again, we can also activate complement, which will lead to that membrane attack complex, which will lead to lysis so the plan right so the plan precipitation lysis agglutination neutralization all of these are possible strategies that these antibodies will utilize when dealing with foreign antigen right so p directly immune or directly antibody um, a directly antibody n directly antibody lysis not directly antibody, it's actually directly from the innate system. So again, all of these P, A, N are directly roles of the antibodies. Lysis comes with the help of the complement. So again, uh, antibodies themselves are unable to cause cellular lysis. This is an important concept on your homework and on the next test. So antibodies themselves are unable to cause direct lysis what they do they recruit complement and then con complement basically uh, does the dirty work right so stuff like that all right uh, we, we've kind of gone over some of this stuff on the last discussion on, on the b uh, adaptive system b i just want to kind of elaborate here and throw in some more vocabulary some more names and hopefully not confuse you more but so cell-mediated immune response is different than all of this stuff, right? So cell-mediated immune response, uh, these are the T cells. They're induced by T cells. All of the antibodies are coming from the B cells, right? So um, when we talk about T cells, we're providing defense against intracellular antigens. So for antibodies to function, the, uh, they're looking for foreign invaders, things that are not supposed to be there. 
for T cells to function. They are looking for cells that um, are our normal cells that have become infected with viruses or by cancer. So they, they have the same antigens, the self antigens that all of our other cells have. They're just acting a little bit different. They, they've been modified a little bit. So T cells are going to have a different strategy to attack abnormal self cells than do the uh, antibodies which attack non-self cells. You can hope that makes sense. Two types of surface receptor of, of T cells. So we have two different types of these T cells, CD4 and or CD8, right? Cell differentiation glycoprotein 4, cell differentiation glycoprotein 8. And both of these, CD4, CD8, are types of T cells, right? Not involved with the production of antibodies. They're going to fight in a different way. So in our cell-mediated response, all of these cells which, which were trained in the thymus, right, our thymus cells. So CD4s, I like to refer to them, and, and I think it makes a lot more sense to refer to them as the helper T cells. And CD8 are the cytotoxic T cells. So CD4s are, are going to help. They're going to you know, you know, be have an auxiliary role whereas CD8 is the one that goes and gets their hands dirty and actually gets involved in the action. We're also going to have our regulatory T cells and memory T cells. So we've talked a little bit about memory B cells, right? And now we're looking at memory T cells, a different family of, uh, of uh, immunity here, a different class of immunity. So uh, you'll see a lot of the notations, right? TH, helper T cell, also known as CD4 cells, uh, TC, cytotoxic T cells, also known as CD8 cells, regulatory T cells, Tregs, and then memory T cells. So all parts of cell-mediated immunity, which is different than the B cells and the antibody type of immunity. So again, we started out at the bone marrow, but we went and matured in the thymus. We have the two sort of two distinctions there. Uh, if you remember our different training, our histocompatibility complex, right? Different classes, class one, class two. Remember they did positive, uh, negative selection. If they didn't pass, it was very harsh. They had to go in, uh, they were, um, they underwent apoptosis, right? That sort of uh, self-induced suicide, all that stuff happened there. Uh, but to make a long story short, we end up down here with our different classes. So we have our helper T's and or the Tregs, and we have our cytotoxic T's. So different paths of maturation. Okay, so our, we're going to come back to those in a bit. So our, our, our cell-mediated discussion is in contrast to the humoral discussion. So antibodies of the humoral response are the simplest ammunition of the immune response. So humoral refers to B cell. Right? So our B cell is producing these monomeric forms or dimeric or pentameric forms of uh, antibodies. So cell mediated is really good at uh, uh, finding and attacking antigens that are inside of the cell, intracellular. Humoral is really good at finding stuff that's extracellular, sort of outside of the cells or foreign cells that, that come into to our body. And so very, very different strategy, different targets for these two branches of uh, the adaptive system. Uh, we know we, we, all this begins with the antigen presenting cells. So the, the antigen is you know, phagocytized, destroyed, and then presented. So that's how both cell uh, mediated and humoral are trained. Uh, the targets are going to be different, right? So T cells are going to target body cells infected by viruses or bacteria. 
So the, their, the bacteria or the virus is inside of our cells, right? Our cells can also be infected with cancer, right? but again, it's still our cell with our cellular markers. Uh, cells of infused or transplanted foreign tissue. So this is a little bit different, but um, we need to allow these cells to persist in our body. So these T cells have to make the proper adjustments and not reject this tissue there. I'm not going to get into all the discussion. It's just the way that they're trained, right? The type of MHC class, MHC1 endogenous, MHC2 exogenous. Again, I'm not going to say it's not important. It is important in the in the realm of, immuno, of immunology, but um, I just want to kind of get to the more you know, relevant uh, aspects here, right? So when we get now to the, the different types of cell-mediated immunity, we look at the helper T cells. Helper T cells uh, remind me of a musician, right? Of a conductor, right? So the conductor, conductor isn't actually playing any instrument, right? They don't have a, a violin or a, a uh, brass instrument, no, they don't play anything per se, but they orchestrate. They tell this side to, you know, crescendo up or, or cut or you come in here loud or soft or faster. So that's kind of what the helper T cells do, right? These helper T cells play a central role in the adaptive immune response. They are primed by the antigen presenting cells. Uh, they're going to help to activate T and B cells. So they help to orchestrate the T cells and the B cells, cell-mediated and humoral responses. They induce T and B cell proliferation. So again, trying to orchestrate both parts of, of, of immunity. And this is very, very, very significant. Without helper T cells, there is no immune response. So I'll repeat that. Without helper T cells, there is no immune response. So that, that shows you just how vital these helper T's are. It's like we have all the, all the soldiers, but without that commander, we have all these musicians, but without that, uh, that conductor, nobody does anything, right? They don't, they, don't, they don't play, they don't begin the symphony per se. So helper T cells, very critical in the establishment of, a, of, a, of the immune response. So integration of the B and T cell lines um, allows for uh, synchronicity, allows for communication, allows for overlapping, you know, branches of these systems. So, again, important, but at the, at the depth of, of the immunology that we don't really have time to get into at this point. So uh, that's the helper T's, right? The cytotoxic T cells are going to be involved in the direct killing, the direct attack of other cells, right? So activated cytotoxic T cells circulate in blood and lymph, lymph and lymphoid organs and search the body cells uh, displaying antigen that they recognize. So uh, these are the assassins. These are the ones that, you know, if, if, a cytotoxic T cell shows up in your neighborhood, like, oh man, somebody's gonna die today, right? So that's sort of the, uh, the role of these cells. So cytotoxic T cells, again, are targeting self cells that are acting strange or that have been infected with viruses. Self cells that have intracellular infections, intracellular bacteria, intracellular parasites, cancer cells or cells that basically um, have been brought in from a, a, a transfused type of process. Right? So again, this is a little bit of a different mechanism, the foreign cells than, than these others here, right? So cytotoxic T's, the regulatory T's, we haven't talked about these yet. So we know the helper T's, orchestrate everything. The cytotoxic T 
NFTs go and actually do the killing, get their hands dirty. And then the regulatory T's are kind of like the break. Once we've killed off what we need to kill off, regulatory T's come in and say, okay, good, good job. Okay, take a break, time out, stop killing stuff, yeah? So cytotoxic T's have to be regulated by the regulatory T cells. So regulatory T cells dampen the immune response by direct contact or by inhibitory cytokines. So by, by cellular chemicals, basically. And it is their role of preventing autoimmune reactions. So we're gonna talk about autoimmunity in a bit. Autoimmunity is when your own immune system starts attacking healthy tissue, healthy cells. So we don't want that. And uh, how do we prevent that? By having a healthy population of regulatory T cells. So it's just again showing you the where all of these things come from, the lines that produce these. Uh, again, our adaptive defenses, our innate defenses. So we have again good communication between these two lines. So here we have our adaptive defenses in brown, adaptive defenses in in green, and again we see the. The B cells that give rise to plasma cells that, that secrete antibodies. The T cells, which differentiate into the CD8s, the CD4s, the T regs. Um, so all of these cells are, are important. A lot of things to, to, to organize here. All right, so with that, let me conclude this discussion. And then we just have a few more slides uh, that will address the sort of immune imbalances, homeostatic imbalances of the immune system. So, so this thing doesn't get super large. Let me stop it now.